Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and you are currently joining me with another episode of Common Design Mistakes. Today we are talking about the laundry room. Your home's most utilitarian spaces need as much love as the rest of your beautifully designed house. They might be the most overused and underappreciated corners of your home, so I want to make sure that you give them all the attention they deserve. Let's break down all the different components of a laundry room and talk about the most common mistakes I see made. The most common design mistake I see made is hanging on to that old washer and dryer. An upgrade might not be something you budget for, but one of the most valuable investments you can make in your home is the washer and dryer. Think about how much laundry you do in a week. If you're single, that might not be a lot, but if you have a family, a smart washer and dryer really is the smartest investment you can make because technological advances have come such a long, long way. Newer versions are energy efficient, they're quieter, they have odor block venting systems, even steam cycles for delicate clothes. I really don't remember the last time I dry cleaned anything, honestly. The latest models on the market actually cuts back on how much time you spend doing laundry. Some models even have built-in Wi-Fi and are compatible with a smartphone app so you can choose the cycle, start and stop times, and get notifications when your clothes are ready. Sadly, these washer and dryers don't do any of the sorting for you, but invest in a quality washer and dryer and spend less time doing laundry and more time doing the things that you love. Another common design mistake I see made is choosing the wrong flooring. If your washer and dryer is located in the garage, it shares that flooring. So if it's concrete, that's perfect. But if you're looking to upgrade a separate room with a washer and dryer, there are some wrong choices and there are right ones. A common flooring mistake would be carpet, obviously, because moisture equals mold. Hardwood and laminate because of water risk, flooding, leaks. I mean, clearly the water will be absorbed and you will have to rip out the entire flooring in case there's a leak. Smart choices include tile, since they are not only durable, but also low maintenance. Vinyl is also an acceptable choice, but be careful of the planks. Even the luxury vinyl planks are waterproof. Water leaks can still get in the seam, so a wiser choice if you're choosing vinyl would be to get vinyl sheets instead. They come in large rolls, so there are virtually no seams that water can seep through. Add area rugs that you can easily launder for something soft underfoot. If you have an open concept space where the washer and dryer is simply just off to a section, you can also think about removing the current flooring if it's a plank, if it's a laminate or hardwood. Add a strip to transition between the hardwood or laminate and a more durable flooring like tile. The next common design mistake I see made is open shelving. Open shelving can be a design disaster when these spaces tend to get messy really quickly. Keep essentials in their place behind closed cabinets and specified containers instead. Use trays. Glass or see-through jars.
and baskets to help corral the clutter. Be sure to keep back stock towards the uppermost cabinets or the back of cabinets and the things you use daily closer to the front. Open shelving is great to mix in with closed cabinetry, but rows upon rows of open shelving with nothing to hide your clutter behind could be a disastrous design mistake. Another design mistake for the laundry room, especially if you're short on space, is side-by-side -side washer and dryers. To maximize a small space, make use of all of that vertical wall height. That means specifying a stacked washer and dryer to free up more room for storage and countertop space. They typically have a 30 inch depth versus a 35 inch depth for side by side models. That means more space for potential cabinetry More space for your cleaning essentials and pretty much more surface space for you to do all that folding and prepping. Another design mistake I see made is no drying rod or garment rack. This is where that vertical wall space also comes in handy. The best spot for this feature is usually above the washer and dryer if you have a side-by-side -side one. Why is this the case? Well, it saves room on the floors and it makes great use of potentially unused corners. Another design mistake is cabinets that are too deep. When you have cabinets that are too deep, it can become a challenge to reach to the far back of the cabinet. This is the perfect spot for pull-out shelves. You can store towels on wire bins, a pull-out drying rack, These deep narrow spaces may be too small for a full cabinet, but think about these types of spaces in the kitchen. Almost like a spice rack in the kitchen, you can store household cleaning supplies for narrow cavities in the laundry room. These final tips I consider more missed opportunities than actual design mistakes. Let's talk about lighting. You might already have that general overhead light, like recessed light fixtures, but consider going lighter and brighter in the space with statement lighting. Of course, there's no denying the power of white paint to brighten up a room, but if you want to go one step further and refresh the lighting in the laundry room, swap out those cold fluorescent lights for eco-friendly warm LEDs and add stylish fixtures like chandeliers, pendants, and wall sconces to add more layers of light to the space. The final design mistake I see made in the laundry room is really simple. It's neglecting to style it. We all want that light, bright, airy, and clean laundry room, but I want you to take a cue from some of these spaces and see what the absolute possibilities are. You may add brightness with bold colored cabinets,
You can paint the ceilings, the base, and the crown molding. You can add strategic wainscoting, molding, and wall paneling. Never underestimate the power of wallpaper for visual impact in tiny spaces. Here's your opportunity to design something creative and fun. I absolutely love this laundry room designed by the Makerista. You can see that it's a small space, but packed to the brim with clever design and storage solutions. Not to mention, it's so stylish, I can easily see this look duplicated in a walk-in closet or even your kitchen pantry. The stacked washer and dryer maximizes space. There's clever use of hard-to-reach corners with a garment rod. Sophisticated use of color and pattern. It features this farmhouse apron sink, which adds a shot of brightness to this darker space. She's added little personalized touches everywhere with the open shelving and display cabinets. It feels fresh, modern, with hints of vintage and country. I mean, I absolutely love this space for how personalized and unique it feels. So the key takeaway so you don't make these common design mistakes in the laundry room is number one, not having a space for everything. I mean, how do you know what everything is? It's really easy. You simply take inventory. If you have watched my dream space series, you'll know that the design process starts with evaluating your space and determining the function of the room. The second takeaway is no color, no pattern, no pop. Small spaces like these are the perfect spot to experiment with color and pattern. Try wallpapering the back of the walls for just a peek of pattern, or maybe even painting a single cabinet or floating shelves in a contrasting bold bright hue. No matter how big or small your laundry room is, I hope you got some really good ideas on how to maximize storage and streamline your workflow in the laundry room. Between myself, my husband, an active toddler, and two little dogs, I'm still doing at least eight loads of laundry a week. I actually went back to last week and I counted how many loads of laundry I did and that's a lot. So I might as well design that laundry space to be beautiful, functional, inviting, and inspired. Stylish features, better organization, and a pretty space to look at is another way you can be inspired by one of the most utilitarian spaces in your home. I hope you enjoyed this latest video to the Common Design Mistakes series. Definitely catch up with the entire series if you haven't seen it. We've covered kitchens, living rooms, bedrooms, home offices. If there's any other rooms you'd like to see, leave me a comment below. If you like this type of content, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Share this video and the series with anyone you know who loves interior design. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.